So Milton Erickson uh, had been a scholar uh, of um, psychology uh, who used hypnosis a lot. And uh, whatever the current understanding of the hypnosis uh, that we are having, it is because of Milton Erickson, uh, who has nicely said that hypnosis was too powerful of a tool to be left to the entertainer. And the stage hypnotists, they are generally entertainers. Uh, but when they are utilizing or misutilizing this particular tool, it can create a lot of damages. I am not going into the, the detail of the history of hypnosis, but what I want to communicate that most of the, the confusions or the, uh, the misunderstanding about hypnosis, uh, though the journey of hypnosis started with mesmer, we know the, the name of mesmerism, uh, but the way mesmer uh, followed mesmerism, uh, that created a lot of uh, uh, the debate. A uh, lot of medical personnel uh, went against mesmer. Uh, even uh, it created a lot of misconception about it. But there are some Indian figures who were simultaneously using hypnosis as part of treatment. For example, Abe Faria, if you go to Goa, the statue of Abe Faria is there. He was from uh, uh, Kerala. Uh, he was a peace priest. Uh, he uh, settled in uh, Goa. Uh, and uh, they are, there are some records that he used to see many individuals who used to come to the church uh, with some psychological condition. He used to use hypnosis as a tool to heal them. One particular person I would like to mention here, that is James Estelle. Uh, who was a Scottish surgeon uh, who was working uh, in the uh, the 19th century, uh, the middle of the 19th, uh, the beginning of the 19th century, uh, in a place near Kolkata, and that is Chandan Nagar. There used to be a hospital, and he was working there as a surgeon. And he recorded that that he used hypnosis as a tool, as hypnoanesthesia, for many minor and major surgeries. And he recorded around 3,000 cases of such surgeries where hypnosis was used. Uh, and then uh, the, the James Brett, uh, who is considered as father of hypnosis, I'm not going into the detail uh, of the history. Uh, there are many scholars who uh, had been working with hypnosis in India in their own capacity. But to understand hypnosis, hypnosis is a therapeutic technique in which clinicians make suggestions to individuals who have undergone a procedure designed to relax them. So one thing is suggestion and the procedure involves relaxation and to focus their mind. That means attention, focused attention. These are the three components that are highly associated with hypnosis and American Psychological Association defines it as a powerful effective therapeutic technique for a wide range of conditions including pain, anxiety and mood disorders particularly for depression. Hypnosis can also be uh, used for people to change their habit uh, such as nail biting, quitting smoking or alcoholism. So that was the initial understanding of hypnosis. Later on, it is modified uh, in 2005, where it says that the procedures traditionally involve suggestions to relax, though relaxation is not necessary. And here, the Milton Erickson contribution is uh, very much that all the time relaxation may not be there, but we can use the, the suggestion as a tool to help the individual. And a wide variety of suggestions can be used, including those to become more alert. Recently, the API has defined the various concepts related to hypnosis, where API says that it is a state of consciousness involving focused attention, reduced peripheral awareness, characterized by an enhanced capacity for response to suggestion. So, with respect to the pain management, these are important. The focused attention, because we know the pain is it's such a sensation 
uh, that demands a lot of attention and people get hooked into it. Reduce peripheral awareness characterized by an enhanced capacity for response to suggestion. So in pain, what happens? There is a negative hypnotic loop. The people get more and more focused into the pain experiences. They think about it again and again. Uh, they generally uh, do not uh, consider the other experiences, only they focus on the, the pain experiences. So there is a negative hypnosis in pain, the negative hypnosis loop. And that's why hypnosis has been found to be quite beneficial to convert the negative hypnotic loop into positive hypnotic loop uh, with focused attention as well as enhanced capacity for response to suggestions. So for that hypnosis, we need to go for hypnotic induction. Hypnotic induction is nothing but a procedure designed to induce hypnosis. We will do at the end some hypnotic induction procedure here. And there is a third component that is hypnotizability. It is an individual's ability to experience suggested alteration in physiology, in sensation, in emotions, in thoughts and behavior during hypnosis. Uh, probably in the demonstration, we'll try to elicit some aspect of it uh, to understand hypnotizability. So hypnotizability is a kind of a trait that individual might be having. And, and there are individual differences. And these individual differences also follow a normal probability curve because some people might be mildly hypnotizable, some people might be moderately hypnotizable, some people might be highly hypnotizable. And Madam was asking about hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy is the use of hypnosis in the treatment of a medical and psychological disorders or concern. Okay, so hypnosis is a tool. When you're using it for a treatment, it becomes a, it becomes hypnotherapy. Now, we need to remember whatever the evidence-based research that we are having, hypnotherapy is an adjunctive technique not a mainstream psychotherapeutic technique. It is an adjunctive technique. It utilizes hypnosis to aid in the treatment of specific symptoms or health condition. Hypnotherapy works by indoors, inducing a hypnotic state that allows people to experience detached external attention and to focus on the inner experiences. This point we have already discussed. Now, there are lots of myths about hypnosis. And uh, before we choose a client, we need to clarify those myths about hypnosis. Because we get many referral that client come to us, uh, that Dr. Saab, uh, there is, uh, I'm having some, the problem. And I've heard that hypnosis is uh, going to help me to forget my problem or there is some problem in my thought, negative thought process, uh, and I know that hypnosis can eradicate those negative thought process. Or some people expect that uh, with one session, they will recover from their problem, and probably they are suffering for 10 years, 15 years. Within one session, they will experience recovery. Some people feel believe that hypnosis is like a sleep, but it is not a sleep state. Um, here it has been found that somewhat, somewhat it is related to the REM state, but it is not entirely the REM state. The people are aware about the surrounding. And in REM state, people are not even aware about the surrounding. Here, the people are aware about what is happening uh, around. They may not respond to that, but they know what is happening. So it is not a sleep. Some people believe that hypnosis is risky. Yeah, what kind of risk they assume? So probably once you are being hypnotized, and then probably you will stay if, uh, for example, if I am hypnotizing you, and uh, after the hypnotism, I am dying. Yeah, there is a cardiac arrest. Uh, and some people believe that then uh, what will happen? The people might not be able to come out of that particular state. No, it never happens. First of all, I do not hypnotize. Hypnosis is a procedure that is very easy to learn. It's a very common procedure 
the many of times we have seen that in our home also our parents have used our friends have used our teachers have used in our school or colleges and it is the capacity of me to be hypnotized it is my own hypnotizability uh, depending upon whether i am mild or moderate or high level of uh, suggestible or hypnotizable uh, client so it is my capacity it is my quality uh, to experience this without my participation it is never possible so i only decide to go into the hypnotic state so the entire the steering is in my hand so whenever i would like to come out of it i would be able to come out of it even some people believe that when i am hypnotizing someone i might do some damage into that particular person for example i can suggest that particular person to do, do something for example if i am hypnotizing a female uh, and uh, if i uh, suggest that particular female that after this session you will be too much attracted towards me uh, and you will have sexual intimacy with me uh, then the female will um, be getting involved into such kind of behavior no that is not going to happen until the female actually wanted it by herself eh, before the suggestion so it doesn't have any kind of risk some people believe that only weak minded people can be hypnotized madam was telling about the only strong minded people can be hypnotized there is no such classification anybody who would like to volunteer anybody who would like to uh, be held with this particular process all people can be hypnotized and there is nothing called that weak mind as strong mind uh, some people might be strong at some aspect of their life some people might be we get some other aspects of their life so everybody has their own strength and uh, weaknesses so it doesn't matter weak mind or strong mind and we do not classify it that way rather it has been seen that if you consider weak mind means people who are having intellectual disability they are having problem in their development of the brain uh, then obviously uh, they might be not, might not be a good candidate uh, for hypnotic work hypnotic mind control as i have already said we cannot control mind at all it is the client who only controls everything as a therapist we guide the individual uh, to experience certain thing ability to hypnotize is a special skill no it is not my skill it is the client skill rather so that's why we say that all hypnosis is actually self hypnosis as a therapist we facilitated that particular process magicians hypnotize people none of the magicians hypnotize people and mostly those are very uh, they are scientifically designed tricks they do and they behave in a particular way so that they can distract the people uh, to continue with their tricks but none of the magicians uh, they can hypnotize people even i can and tell you there is a story and is one of the uh, the famous physician a uh, magician from bengal uh, was psc uh, sorkar senior was there and people i have seen that some people uh, claim that psc sorkar senior used to show a particular magic show uh, for example if he is having a magic show at 5 pm uh, in a hall and the people are waiting there thousands of people are there and the the psc sorker uh, is not coming there it is 5 it is 5:30 it is 6 and the people are furious and there is no news when he is going to come at around 6:30 pm psc sorker comes and then people started shouting hey, why are you so late there is no information and uh, psc sorker says that ki what is the time what time is my magic show Uh, well, your time was at five o'clock, and what is the time now? It is six thirty. And the the people are telling. This worker uh, asked that uh, where it is six thirty. Hey, look at your watch. Hey, hey, my watch it is five only. And all people when they looked at their wrist was they found that for everybody uh, it was five o'clock. 
so people say that probably it was kind of hypnotism that P.C. Swarkar did. But these kind of magics are known as stand magic. Stand magic means uh, those magics never is being shown. Uh, those are only being propagated uh, uh, by creating propaganda. Uh, those magics were never there. People forget everything and in the hypnotic process. No, some people might experience amnesia for short period of time. Uh, but most of the people, they do not. They can remember uh, well what uh, ever was uh, going on during that time. And if some people wanted to forget something and that uh, for those people, they might forget some, some those things. Otherwise, most of the people, they do not forget the procedure. Individual under hypnosis loses all awareness of surroundings. As I said, he, there is actually the mind is being very alert, highly focused. Uh, they are being able to understand what is happening around. They might not respond to that. Uh, they are giving more focus on, putting more focus on the suggestions that are being delivered by the hypnotherapist. Uh, but they are not out of touch of the environment. If there is sudden fire somewhere uh, or there is sudden temperature difference, and the individual will be able to judge it and will be able to take any kind of safety measures. So all awareness is present. Everyone can be hypnotized. Yes, if they want to participate, they can be hypnotized. If there is no major intellectual disability, they can be hypnotized. Uh, very small children who cannot focus, who cannot operate, uh, they are not a candidate for hypnosis. Here, the participation is important. Individual's willingness, motivation. So whenever we see a particular client, we try to see uh, why the particular person is planning to go uh, for hypnosis. There are more, like hypnotherapy outcome is temporary. It is not, actually. Uh, like any other psychotherapy, we go for a relapse prevention program. And hypnotherapy is not a single session affair. Though some people claim that in one session, uh, we, are, we are being able to get this kind of outcome. With some rare cases, yes, we can get some good outcome, desirable outcome in one to two sessions. But in most of the clients, we might need more number of sessions, four, five, six, even 10, 12 sessions. Uh, like most of the dominant psychotherapies, evidence-based psychotherapies like cognitive behavior therapy, mindfulness based uh, stress reduction that requires 8, 10, 12 sessions. For hypnotherapy also for most of the client needs those number of sessions. And at the, at the terminal phase of the session, we also work on relapse prevention. So there is longitudinal uh, outcome uh, because of hypnotherapy. Many people believe that, that I was telling hypnotizability can be classified into mild form moderate and high or deep trance state. Many people believe that only people who are highly hypnotizable, that means they want, they can go to the deep trance state. They only can be benefited from the hypnotherapy outcome, which is not true. Rather, it has been seen that people who are mildly or moderately hypnotizable, greater therapeutic work can be done because they are more flexible. People who are highly hypnotizable, going into the deep trance, they are, actually we can do limited work for them. However, there are some therapeutic work, depending upon what kind of hypnotherapeutic strategies that we are going to use, depending upon that, some people are actually good for mild to moderate uh, some techniques are actually good for mild to moderate as uh, a hypnotizable client. And some specific techniques, I'll mention some of those techniques here, are better for uh, people who are highly hypnotizable. Hypnosis can heal everything. No, it cannot heal everything. Uh, some people, particularly non-professional, uh, who has learned some techniques of hypnosis, they claim that whatever the problem uh, you come with, uh, I'll uh, I'll be able to heal. Uh, even I'll be able to do the uh, remote hypnosis. No, uh, those are false claims. 
uh, those are not scientific uh, claim at all. It cannot heal everything uh, like any other treatment modality. Persons under hypnosis will tell dark secrets. Never. As I said, they are having complete control over their mind. They are not going to tell uh, anything that they do not want to share. Persons under hypnosis will follow all instructions blindly. No, not at all. Until he or she voluntarily or whenever the person is awake, non-hypnotic state, the person wants to uh, follow some of the instruction. Uh, during hypnosis also, uh, the particular person is only going to follow those instructions only, otherwise not. I, in a hypnotic session, if I ask someone that you undress yourself, the person will never undress, rather will get up and will give me a slap. Depth of hypnosis associated with recall of true events. This is also might not be a fact. Because whatever the, the recalling associated with hypnosis, in hypnosis, uh, one of the techniques that we uh, use is that we go for an age regression where individual is supposed to go to, uh, for example, a particular person develops some pain experience at particular age. Uh, so in hypnosis, using age regression, uh, we are creating imagination where individual um, can yes. identify himself or herself uh, during that onset of that particular pain experience. Now, whatever the experience that particular person is going to share, uh, for example, the pain started five years back and in age regression person has gone that five years back and person is telling, okay, that created my particular problem. This reporting might be a fact, might not be a fact, might be a part of the false memory. So you may not be sure, but it doesn't matter. Whatever the person believe is, we try to deal with it. Uh, so hypnosis cannot be... Uh, used as a fact-checking tool. Now, there are various schools of hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy is considered as father of all psychotherapy because we know the, uh, the formal and uh, the school of psychotherapy that began with Sigmund Freud psychoanalysis. Before Sigmund Freud uh, came with uh, psychoanalysis, uh, he actually uh, went to James Braid, who is the father of hypnosis, to learn about hypnotherapy. And he used hypnotherapy with some of the, the clients. Uh, he uh, was not that very successful. Uh, and sometimes he found that, uh, that without hypnosis also, some therapeutic work can be done. And that's how uh, he came with psychoanalysis. So that's why uh, some people claim that hypnotherapy can be considered as father of all psychotherapy. Now, in terms of school, in terms of skill means this analytic school, dynamic school, Freudian school, where it is believed that whatever the suffering that I am having, uh, the root is some, somewhere in the past. Somewhere in the past. So when we try to address those the past trauma that particular person experienced and that is the domain of hypnoanalysis or psychodynamic hypnotherapy to work with this past trauma uh, or psychodynamic hypnotherapy uh, there are specific techniques or strategies those are being uh, used uh, as i mentioned that age regression uh, is very common uh, strategy where we uh, do the psychodynamic hypnotherapy I particularly follow the cognitive hypnotherapy, cognitive behavior therapy, uh, some of you might be aware about, uh, where uh, it assumes that uh, the cognition or the thought and the emotion and the behavior, they are interrelated. If there is some problem in my <clears throat> thought process, it will have impact on my emotions. For example, uh, if I consider that pain is a very catastrophic pain means the life is going to be uh, going to end. So that particular person, obviously the kind of emotions will be very much overwhelming. Well, depression, anxiety, that can be there. And the behavioral manifestation might be uh, 
uh, withdrawing himself or herself and not taking any kind of uh, the treatment. So there is a this triad between the cognition, emotion, and behavior in the individual. So cognitive behavior therapy tries to work on the the negative the thought process or non evidence based thought process or irrational thought process or irrational expectation that particular person is about is having. Uh, and when we use those cognitive strategies, that is known as cognitive restructuring, we restructure their thought process. Uh, for example, we have seen that for many pain uh, related ex people who are experiencing pain, and most of them, they consider pain as an enemy. And we ask them whether pain can be a friend. So we ask them, like, to what is pain? The people say pain is a kind of sensation. So you name some of the other senses then, like seeing something, hearing something, tasting something. These are all touch is also kind of a sensation. Uh, experiencing and the cold and hot, that is also kind of a sensation. So then we ask them what is the essential sensation for survival, uh, without which we cannot survive. And when they can I identify, okay, experience of uh, cold and hot, and the pain, these are the essential senses and for survival, mm -hmm. they start mm -hmm. believing mm -hmm. that, okay, mm -hmm. then... <laughs> Madam, will you please uh, mute the microphone? Okay. Okay, mute it. So, uh, what happens, uh, like when they start uh, reconsidering, okay, those, so the pain is actually indicating me there is a problem. Without the pain, I, even I will not be able to identify a fracture. I will not be able to identify if there is major problem and there. So, pain is actually friend. So, when there is a change in the perspective from enemy to friend, that experience related to pain also that differ. So that's how we generally address in the cognitive therapy. And when we use cognitive therapeutic techniques along with hypnosis, that is known as cognitive hypnotherapy. Uh, cognitive hypnotherapy is, is having specific pain related protocol, specific um, uh, depression related protocol, specific anxiety disorders related protocol. And uh, cognitive hypnotherapy is now being considered as evidence based practice for management of pain management of depression, management of uh, anxiety disorders, and management of stress, and some infertility-related issues. Rational emotive therapy is another, uh, is very similar to the cognitive uh, therapy, uh, where uh, in irrational beliefs are being uh, targeted. So I'm not going into the detail of uh, it. The behavioral hypnotherapy, behavioral strategy, behavior modification strategies are being suggested under hypnosis, uh, particularly when the individual uh, having experience related to fear or phobia is there. So their behavioral hypnotherapy is having the greater role. And we can also use direct suggestion uh, for uh, as a hypnotherapeutic uh, strategy. Uh, some people, they are comfortable with the direct suggestion, but all clients might not be uh, very good candidate for direct uh, suggestion. Direct suggestion, uh, like uh, if the particular, for example, particular person is experiencing pain uh, in some particular body part, the direct suggestion might tell that can, uh, with day by day, we'll find that this particular body part is experiencing uh, more comfortableness and there is a peaceful feeling in that particular part. And, and you will be able to move your this particular part more comfortably day by day. So these are direct suggestions. And some with some of the clients, around uh, 20 to 30 percent of the clients, these direct suggestions also can be quite helpful. However, the metaphorical suggestions or indirect hypnotherapy, uh, those are uh, that is more powerful tool uh, where we use a lot of uh, the metaphor story, a lot of visuals uh, to uh, explain. For example, one metaphor uh, that I use that whenever there is an experience, if the particular person is experiencing pain in the left leg, for example. So 
under the hypnosis, uh, we'll ask the individual, like if you have to represent that particular experience of pain with a particular color, uh, what color do you imagine? For example, the particular person says that I'm imagining that this is uh, black. Okay. So then we use number of steps uh, to modify that particular black color uh, into white color. And we have seen that maybe it might take five to 10 minutes of work. And after the change uh, from the blackness to whiteness, many people, they experience there is relief uh, in the pain experience. So that is part of metaphorical hypnotherapy. And there are experimental hypnosis. Experimental hypnosis are not used in therapy. They are basically for uh, scientific work. Now, when to plan hypnosis? It is appropriate for stress management. Any kind of stress management, be it work stress, and uh, we know that and the pain is having, pain itself is stressful, and sometimes pain can be aggravated with stress. So uh, for stress management, hypnosis is a very good uh, and effective tool. Uh, anxiety disorders are uh, quite common with uh, the pain experiences, and in anxiety disorders, hypnosis is a good tool. When particular person is experiencing uh, pain experience uh, and there can be uh, adjustment issues, uh, even with lots of amputation case. Uh, yesterday only I was seeing uh, a 26 years old boy uh, whose both the legs had to be amputated. So obviously he is having huge adjustment uh, issue and there is also experience of uh, the pain uh, there. Their hypnosis can be uh, used even with the phantom limb experience uh, we have seen that hypnosis is a very good tool. Post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, their hypnosis can be used. Somatoform. Somatoform uh, means where individual experience unexplained pain. Somatoform pain, unexplained pain. Uh, there is no physiological basis uh, for it, but the particular person is experiencing. There it has been quite effective. Uh, sexual dysfunctions, uh, both male and female sexual dysfunction like erectile difficulty, um, premature ejaculation, uh, orgasmic disorders, vaginismus, uh, dysparanoia, uh, that is uh, female sexual pain disorders. So there, uh, the role of hypnotherapy <clears throat> has been very good. Sleep disorders. Uh, Pain is having high correlation with sleep-related problem, and they are, uh, the hypnotherapy is a very effective tool to induce sleep in the individual. Impulse control disorders, uh, for example, pathological gambling, pathological buying, so they are also, uh, it can be quite effective. Psychological factors affecting medical conditions, the habit modification, lifestyle change, and there it has been found to be appropriate. However, it is inappropriate in where there is intellectual disability. In neurodevelopmental condition like autism, um, some clients it may be, but many clients it might not be uh, properly. Addressed. Some of the organic condition like delirium, dementia, amnestic disorders or other cognitive disorders, uh, it cannot be used. Um, hypnosis should not be used as an independent treatment for psychotic disorders like schizophrenia, bipolar disorders um, during the acute phase. In severe depressive disorders, particularly the having high suicidality, uh, it, it may not be uh, appropriate to start with, uh, but uh, during the, the remission phase, hypnosis can be a good tool. So these are uh, some of the, the contraindications that we use. And if the person experiencing severe pain, very severe pain and cannot focus on the suggestion at all, so there also uh, it might not be appropriate to begin with uh, direct hypnotic strategy. Indirect hypnosis can be helpful though. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the strength of hypnosis as an assimilating tool, whatever the, the treatment that you are using, it adds leverage to the treatment. It shortens the treatment time. So that is one of the, the biggest advantage. Hypnosis serves as a strong placebo. We use placebo aspect and hypnosis is a good placebo uh, technique where a lot of placebo suggestions, suggestions can be given 
Hypnosis breaks resistance. For some clients, uh, there are therapeutic resistance uh, and, and that can be dealt. Hypnosis fosters a strong therapeutic alliance and your relationship with the client will be quite strong. It induces deep relaxation and relaxation obviously uh, can reduce the experience of pain. It strengthens the ego, that is, improves the self-esteem, self-confidence uh, of the individual. It facilitates divergent thinking. Uh, mostly what happens when experiencing pain, the individual becomes focused only on the pain and they forget about all other uh, issues. So it can facilitate the divergent thinking. It directs attention to wider experiences and enable access to non-conscious process. For example, if there's some unconscious material uh, that might be uh, probably uh, associated with, for example, I can remember a case uh, where uh, we're working uh, on a client uh, who had uh, pain experience in the left hand and it was medically unexplained. Uh, when we started working uh, with hypnosis uh, for this particular client, uh, it was identified that uh, the mother had actually the similar problem and mother had a sudden death and that grieving of that particular experience uh, the morning of that particular experience uh, could not be completed. So there was a strong association. In the session only, we facilitated the morning process and there are cathartic experience. The client started crying in the hypnotic process and um, we followed the same thing for another two to three sessions and we found that that experience of pain that particular person had for last two to three years, that was no more there. Hypnosis facilitates imagery conditioning. We can use some positive imagery, uh, some pleasant imagery, particularly with pain experience. We have seen that imagination of the green color and the blue color, uh, they can be quite therapeutic. And in uses positive mode. And we can use post-hypnotic suggestions also. After the hypnosis, we can uh, tell them and uh, that now onwards, uh, you will be able to do this, this, this thing. Uh, and whenever you do thing, uh, you will find that you are you are actually becoming more calm and comfortable. So these are post-hypnotic suggestions. That is the added advantage uh, that we can use. It enhances training in positive self-hypnosis. So whenever the person needs to uh, induce uh, hypnosis, individuals can do the same thing. Rather, we uh, generally advocate the client to practice self-hypnosis every day so that they learn to control uh, their experience. And hypnotic techniques are easily exported. Uh, there is not a problem. Those are not very uh, difficult uh, techniques. So uh, whenever you talk about hypnosis, there are four primary issues you focus on. One is comfortable posture, lying posture or uh, sitting with back rest. Uh, is one of the most comfortable posture with minimum uh, the noise uh, of light as well as sound. And so that can facilitate hypnosis or relaxation both. Passivity. Passivity means no unusual movement. Uh, even passivity in the thought. So during the hypnosis, if the person is planning something, uh, obviously that is going to interfere with the process. Focused attention, whatever the suggestions are given, given the client is focusing on the suggestions and awareness of the, the experience, whatever is happening. So these four issues are associated with hypnosis. Whatever the modality that we use, whatever the strategy we use, if you can keep focus on these four areas, hypnosis can be induced. So these are some of the aspects related to uh, the hypnosis uh, that um, we, uh, I would like, wanted to uh, share. So before I proceed further, if you are having any query clarification, uh, that can be addressed here. Any query clarification? Anything not clear or any doubt? Uh, 
any any questions for dr rai any questions anything whatever you have learned so you can yes sir yes. i have i have a question sir yes yes so what is the difference between meditation and hypnosis okay uh, meditation and hypnosis the state wise uh, there are not much differences but hypnosis there are in meditation only there is component of uh, the focused attention okay the component of relaxation is not that much prominent though people who are meditating they might feel relaxation but that is not the goal in the meditation in mindful meditation uh, there is also component of relaxation sometimes but not all the time but in hypnosis in most of the cases though hypno relaxation is not mandatory but most of the cases we try to induce relaxation and second is the most important issue is other than the focus attention is the suggestion the suggestibility in meditation there is no role of suggestibility no suggestion is being given but in hypnosis we use the individual's capacity to accept and receive suggestions here so that is making the difference the suggestibility of an individual or delivering of particular suggestion therapeutic suggestion in meditation no such there am i clear sir yes yes sir i i have another question yes 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 go ahead sir sir we heard that uh, hypnosis is a useful tool in interrogation but here the sir said that the when the uh, the person is uh, will not give any information that the information cannot be taken out from him the, there is a contradiction yes of my perception first sir. of all hypnosis as i said that i need to be motivated to be hypnotized person who is going to face interrogation the person is obviously not motivated so in hypno the interrogation procedure hypnosis is not actually used what is being used that the some the medicine is being like pentothal interview is being conducted some pharmacological agent is being induced Uh, so that there is a drowsy experience and because of the drowsy experience the person loses the voluntary control over uh, the volition okay. over the thought uh, and whatever want to share uh, but in hypnosis it is not possible to use uh, with non motivating individual in the interrogation process however if there is some conflict in the individual uh, that individual is not able to understand but want to reveal something using hypnosis as a tool so those conflictual issues can be addressed and person might be able to tell that okay, this is the issue this is the conflict uh, and that i wanted to share but for non motivated client in the interrogation hypnosis cannot be used thank you sir thank you very much anybody else doctor i can uh, from my side i am i am having one yes. questions so do you having yes. any you know the the list of the conditions painful conditions where hypnotherapy uh, will be more useful sir mostly for chronic pain it is being more useful in fibromyalgia it is being quite useful uh, i might not be i am a clinical psychologist i am not well versed with the the pain uh, experience uh, you are the best person to tell by understanding uh, the what what we generally focus in uh, in uh, the pain uh, experience uh, like the domains that we focus one is the perception another is the expression another is the the reaction so in when there is a pain perception there is enhanced attention towards the pain experience individual having their different kind of knowledges or understanding about the pain and some of those knowledges or understanding might be false knowledge or understanding there is a sense of control that i need to control the pain uh, they try to uh, control in a way that might sometimes uh, uh, create more pain experience and they are having certain kind of expectations about the pain so what we generally focus for the pain management is we focus on the psychological dimensions of the individual uh, we uh, 
we our primary target is not to minimize the pain that is not the primary target that what about the, the psychological the stress, components the stress, are the the, the yeah. stress component of the pain or the yeah. the, the uh, so the pathology has to be addressed by some other tools but yeah. the 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 uh, Emotional component of the pain is taken care of by the hypnotherapy. Yeah. Because so, you know, pain has very... the two components. You know, we are discussing about the pain the definition. Pain has a physical component as well as the emotional component. Emotional component. The emotional component can be taken care of by the hypnosis. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So our primary goal is to improve the quality of life and, and uh, reduce the suffering. As such. Like one of my teachers, uh, Dr. Palan, uh, who uh, is MD in physiology, he used to uh, very simply he used to say that the the suffering equal to pain plus anxiety plus apprehension anxiety means what is going happening now and apprehension what is going to happen there so using a psychotherapeutic strategy be it cognitive therapy be it hypnotherapy uh, if you can minimize the anxiety minimize the apprehension obviously the suffering will become one third of uh, what is there currently so we generally try to work on the uh, the psychological dimension, emotional dimension, and 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 whatever the the reduction of pain experience is there, that is the bonus that we get. And yes, people they report that there is a reduction of pain experience, but that is not the primary target. So another important uh, question. I am sure that uh, almost all of them have the similar question. So um, can uh, the pain physicians? practice hypnotherapy in the on their patient how Once whether the, whether whether it is a risky job or whether it is a very difficult uh, things to learn to apply it for the patients so what is uh, your uh, as, I, as i said the techniques are very simple uh, it is not very difficult to learn but obviously the ones has to uh, learn it uh, from uh, and, and some supervision initially maybe for uh, four or five cases uh, are helpful. And there are various techniques associated with hypnosis. Uh, better to be master of one or two techniques. Uh, may not learn all the strategies. Uh, one or two techniques uh, can be used with the, the client. And the best is if you go for liazo. Uh, liazo people who are uh, the mental health professionals who are having understanding of the mental health as well as who know hypnotherapy uh, as a the strategy, if you can uh, do a liazo with them, uh, probably uh, the, the psychotherapist is going to take care of the psychological component. But the medical person is also, they can learn some, the basic concept of hypnosis. And as I said earlier, the techniques are very simple. Uh, nothing the way magicians show, uh, nothing to do like that. Uh, so it can be used. And some of the uh, we have seen that some of the physicians, uh, they use a very simple uh, hypnotherapeutic strategy only to induce the relaxation. And that will reduce the, um, the stress, that will improve the sleep pattern of an individual. And that is good enough. Uh, that is good enough. And those are uh, not very difficult to learn. So Dr. Gaurav Acharya has raised your hand. Gaurav, you yes. can ask your question. <laughs> Uh, sir, I just wanted to know that uh, initially you told that uh, some scientist, the uh, father of hypnotherapy, he did uh, experiment and did uh, uh, mild, moderate and severe surgeries. Estelle. Uh, James Estelle from near so, to Kolkata. Uh, so he actually uh, nociceptive pain was being uh, decreased by hypnotherapy. That means so is it that uh, uh, the uh, nociceptive part of the pain is controlled by hypnotherapy or neuropathic part and the emotional part? All and... the parts are generally focused using hypnotherapy. And for some of the clients, what they do is um, they use hypnosis as well as anesthesia. Both. Yes. What happens when the for anesthesia uh, related chemicals are used along with hypnosis there is a decreased dose of the anesthesia for some of the severe surgery cases the combination is helpful so obviously the, when you are not going for high dose of anesthesia uh, its complications are being less 
So that is one thing. And for some client, even the neuropathic pain, uh, I personally, as a clinical psychologist, uh, uh, cannot uh, use uh, hypnoanesthesia for surgery cases. But some of my friends who are the medical professionals, they use it uh, on a regular basis. Uh, they have used it. Uh, I have seen that for neuropathic uh, pain also, as well as the uh, the major surgical procedure also, uh, even for painless delivery also, they have used. And so one more question for how, Madhav, what is the duration for which uh, the patient gets uh, relieved from the pain? Or do we need to remove repeat the sessions uh, later on also? We need to repeat. We need to repeat. It depends on the individual. We need to repeat. On average, there are six to ten sessions are necessary. Yeah, after six to ten sessions, the six to ten yeah. sessions are over. Yeah. Now the patient was pain free for around six months or one year or five years, and later on again, can he or she suffer pain? Uh, first pain? of all, first of all, as I said, that after hypnosis, pain has disappeared. It might not happen, okay. but the functionality can improve. The experience of pain might be less. Some people might not feel ex pain. Also, that also can happen. But all the client, the pain will disappear with hypnosis. It is not going to happen. Okay. Some, the, our focus is improve the functionality, improve the, the adherence to the treatment, eh? improve the individual's capacity to manage the stress, eh? to manage the disturbed emotional state. And the, uh, there are studies related to uh, the hypnosis and uh, pain management. Uh, they have followed up up to five years, the relapse rate is being quite low. Okay. 